Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, TheMediaSpeaks.com. I've also been putting articles up there, and I recently did a very long one. Um, yours truly finally managed to get a cold. I share a microphone with my brother, where we work, and he got sick, and i tell you what, I might have been up, but you can only do so much. It finally got through after speaking into his microphone. I knocked it out in two days, two, a little under two days, little, I'm sorry, a little over two days without any synthetic chemicals unless you want to count cough drops. What did I take? It takes you going to the media speaks. Look that up. Um, click Sam DeGangi and you'll see my article on how to beat the dreaded cold. Also articles on Fukushima, articles on gun rights, articles on music. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Alright guys, here we go. This is from InfoWars. Texas congressman threatens Obama with impeachment if he uses executive order on guns. Here's my thought on this. First of all, before I get a bunch of hate mail, I do think that Obama is a prime candidate to be impeached uh, based on things he has done against the Constitution. However, Bill Clinton, unfortunately, was an extremely popular president. And when he got impeached, it was the beginning of the end for the Republican Party. The Republican Party should have impeached him over China Gate, not uh, Maronica Gate. Gate, I hate that by the way. But anyway, I don't think you can take down another president that has popularity numbers as high as Obama does. I just don't see it happening. Would I like to see it happen? Do I support it? Yes, of course I do. I'm an American. But there are a lot of Americans here that are not, okay? But I'd like to see it happen. And, uh, and here's some news on it. A Texas congressman is threatening President Obama with impeachment if his administration exercises executive action to scale back the Second Amendment. In a press release titled Obama gun, Obama's Gun Grab and Unconstitutional Threat to the Nation, Republican Representative Steve Stockman, hero, stated the White House's recent announcement they will use executive orders and executive actions to infringe on our constitutionally protected right to keep and bear arms is an unconstitutional and unconscionable attack on the very founding principles of this republic. Support this, man. Support it. This is the kind, I mean, you, you say that they don't stand up, but they do. So stand up with them. Um, if the president is allowed to suspend constitutional rights on his own personal whims, our free republic has effectively ceased to exist. There's, there, there, there are patriots, there are heroes in office, but if we don't support them, if we let them hang without all the uh, support, support gathered like we did Dr. Paul, then we're going to have less and less of them. Um, again, I, I don't see it happening, but it would be wonderful. It really would. All right. Obama's gun safety executive actions create a snitch culture. Everyone's writing about this, but recently InfoWars linked to me and got me mad views. So we'll start off with two InfoWars articles. Thank you, Alex. Following the scripted dog and pony show with a gaggle of stage prop children, the imperial president on Wednesday signed a number of executive actions he claims will reduce gun violence. The actions do not cover violence committed with hammers and clubs without pace violent committed without paces violence committed with rifles. I'm gonna read some of the things that this wonderful president is trying to put through. And there's something I want to get to before I do. In the article where I mentioned uh, the health and how not to get, get sick, uh, there's some all natural remedies for those of you who suffer anxiety of some kind. And you may want to read it because they're making it so that if you go to a mental health specialist because you're depressed, if someone dies and you're, you're, you're bombed, if for some reason, they 
can get on record that you have a history of mental illness. Obama is now steering us in the direction where that can preclude you from owning a gun. Are there crazy people that should not own a gun? Yes, but you know as well as I do that that is not who they are talking about. So, I mean, my dad was a psychiatric nurse, but it's not the same industry today. It's not. And this is another reason why, unless you really, you know, are sitting there with a gun to your own head, you might want to avoid the strength office like you would downtown Fukushima. <sighs> Issue a presidential memorandum, he wants to do, to require federal agencies to make relevant data available to the federal background check system. Address unnecessary legal barriers, particularly relating to health insurance probability, portability, excuse me, and Accountability Act that may prevent states from making information available to the background check system. So he wants to even go around already existing laws to do this. Improve incentives, money, for states to share information with background check system. You don't do it, you don't get money. That's what that amounts to. Direct the Attorney General to review categories of individuals prohibited from having a gun to make sure dangerous people are not slipping through the cracks. And of course, they define what dangerous is, which will be everybody. There's many of these. I can't read them all because the show will be an hour long. But go and read some of these. I am going to pick some more. Um, there's a total of 23, and they're all awful. Um, <clears throat> Issue a presidential memorandum directing the Centers for Disease Control to research the causes and prevention of gun violence. They are going to say that the cause is everything that they are not in favor of and that the solution is everything that they are in favor of. Come on, people. Wake up. Um, provide incentives for schools to hire school resource officers. Clarify that the Affordable Care Act does not prohibit doctors from asking their patients about guns in their homes. They are looking to classify anybody that wants to protect themselves with a gun when they need to as a mental case. This isn't going to work. We are smarter than that. Are we? Usher fan? No, no. Hopefully! All right, um, this is the dailycaller.com. Georgetown law professor scrap the archaic idiosyncratic and downright evil constitution now um, Alex Jones mentioned on his show uh, about how they're creating movies and storylines I should say now about hating Paul Revere and the founders of the nation well it's still going on with our well this is, this is a somewhat dated article but it was sent to me with hours to go before the nation heads off the fiscal cliff, Georgetown law professor Louis Michael Seidman, piece of human filth, writes that the time has come to scrap the Constitution. Well, I mean, if he says so, I mean, after all, he's, he's, he's got to be right. In an op-ed published in the New York Times Monday, Seidman, a constitutional law professor claimed that the nation's foundational document is the real impediment to progress and solution to America's troubles. Well, it is if you're a communist. It is if you'd like to mix communism and fascism like we are now. As the nation teeters at the edge of fiscal chaos, observers are reaching the conclusion that the American system of government is broken. Seedman, the wise Seedman, said, he only pontificates more. But almost no one blames the culprit, our insistence on obedience to the Constitution, with all its archaic, idiocentric, and downright evil provisions. According to this genius, the country's insistence that it maintain the, well, the will of centuries-old document has saddled us with a dysfunctional political system, kept us from debating the merits of divisive issues, and inflamed our in public. Once you start hacking away at the Constitution, 
you will not be able to merit the debate the merits of divisive issues because part of the Constitution is the First Amendment. People like this want to pick the things that they like out of the Constitution and say that it's fine, but it's progress if we get rid of the rest. That is absolute malarkey. That is why we have a republic, people, and not a democracy. Because 51% of the people cannot change the minority, which is the way that it is supposed to be. It reminds me of these people that have grab bag religions. Well, you know, I think Islam and Christianity and the Hindus are all, they're all right. And I believe that when you die, you become light. Okay. One of them believe in a triune God. One of them believe that that is absolutely atheistic. And one of them believe that there are many gods. Oh, but you just take the ones you like because that makes you feel good. That's what these idiots want to do to the Constitution, and it makes me sick. Um, this is for one of my listeners. Um, I don't normally, if you send me something, don't panic. I'm not going to go ahead and put your name on the internet. This was on a public comment line, so I'm going to address it. Miranda West, can you do a show on the views on why some men think all females sleep with men for money? I replied, I would love to. As a matter of fact, if you send me an email, I shall read it on the air and talk of what spawned it. Uh, correct views, uh, 1 14, 2013. I didn't get a letter from her. So I'm going to address what I think she's talking about. There's a belief in this country, largely led by the hip-hop pulp culture and largely uh, led by Hollywood, where uh, one of the heroes of the New Texas Chainsaw Massacre is cheating on his girlfriend, Trey Songs. Um, that's a hero now. Um, it leads to this misogynistic attitude. And I can tell you that women bring this on themselves. I work in a club and girls always want to dance to music that calls them bitches and hoes and tricks. And then they're surprised when that's the way that people treat them. And I think a large degree of that is cultural because you could take Marilyn Manson, who says the most vile things sometimes. And I like his music. I, I personally do. I went to school with him. Um, and I don't think most people automatically project that onto the society. And I think the reason that that is, is there are not as many successful Marilyn Mansons as there are to um, uh, Drake's, for instance. So I think that's part of it. I think the other thing is uh, absolute bimbos, like Kesha, where being cheap or using men for money and taking their drinks is the subject of every single song that the girl ever had. Um, that's led to this. And another thing I feel that has led to this is what I saw in this article right here. This is 35 statistics about the working poor in America that will blow your mind from the economic collapse Michael Snyder. I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to read the ones that stand out. Why do women work in professions like stripping or dancing? Why do women work in any place that they can get a job at? Well, if you have an answer to that, it is a misconception. It is what everyone is doing because the economic collapse is happening. People that don't believe in the New World Order somehow can't see that all of our jobs have been sent overseas to other countries that are also part of the New World Order that they say doesn't exist. Well, you know what else doesn't exist? Any of our jobs! Um, so women and guys and people will do many different things. With women, if they're pushed to extremes, and I don't mean that dancing or stripping is an extreme, I mean further. If that happens, it's easier for a female in our society to make money that way than it is for a guy. No, it's not impossible. It's just a generalization, and it's correct. Um, I'm going to give you some of these, though, and this is why you're going to see more and more women prostituting themselves. It's why you're going to see more and more guys selling drugs. Why? 
because there's no other help for America. The, economic, the U.S. economy continues to trade good-paying jobs for low-paying jobs. 60% of the jobs lost during the last recession were mid-wage jobs, but 58% of the jobs created since then have been low-wage jobs. Um, you want more? I'm just going to go through them randomly. You know how I do these lists. Low-income families spend about 8.6% of their incomes on gasoline. Other families spend 2.1%. According to one survey, 77% of all Americans are now living paycheck to paycheck, at least part of the time. For those of you Kesha fans, 77% is over three quarters of the population that works. The six heirs of Walmart founder, Sam Walton, have a net worth that is roughly equal to the bottom 30% of all of Americans combined. So for selling out the American people, the Waltons get a net worth that is 30% of all Americans combined. If you're not angry, you're a Kesha fan. Um, the average CEO now makes approximately 350 times as much as the average American worker makes. The number of families in the United States living on $2 a day or less has more than doubled between 96 and 2011. If you think that's impossible, I used to drive cab for Yellow Cab. Fred Nero, the greediest, most selfish lease manager that ever owned a company. Um, you would end up having to budget two liters of pop. Yours truly has been there, and the numbers for that are going up. There's more and more in that article. But yeah, you're going to see more prostitutes. And you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and prostitute, because you didn't choose it. You didn't dial it up on the phone. It didn't happen because you didn't apply yourself. It didn't happen because you made a bunch of mistakes. If you're one of those people, you already know it. It happened because the places you should be working have been shipped overseas, like the filthy Cotton Timken Company located in Canton, Ohio, and the Hoover Company that destroyed North Canton. Yeah, I'll drop names here of corporations. I'm not even afraid. Bastards. All right, last thing I want to get to, CBS Giant Squid filmed in deep for the first time. You guys know I love these. these I love to end with these. I just love to. The mysterious and mythical giant squid, also known as the Kraken, has never been spotted alive in the deep sea until now. A team of Japan's National Science Museum has captured footage, it's a very, like, two, two tiny bits of footage, footage of a giant squid that is in, natural, in its natural habitat, nearly a third of a mile below the surface of the ocean. It's the first video of its kind. I'm going to go on. Giant squids, which can grow up to 60 feet in length, have been found dead on beaches and photographed in the ocean and more often on the surface. But scientists, it says, have never seen a video of the strange creature below the waves until a mission put together by Japan, I'll get to that, Broadcasting Corp, NHK, and the Discovery Channel filmed the elusive beast off the coast of Japan. Last paragraph. The giant squid was so beautiful that it seemed to sparkle. Uh, tsunami... Kuba Dara, one of the lead scientists on the expedition, told reporters. I was so thrilled when I saw it firsthand, but I was confident that he would because I was so thrilled when I saw it firsthand, but I was confident we would because we rigorously researched the areas we might find it based on past data. Um, it's a direct quote when you go from one language to another, the sentences are choppy. Um, <coughs> this is great. Um, I'm delighted that they really exist, but here's a side note. They found it in Japan. Now, I know it's too soon for Fukushima to be causing giant squid. However, it can be argued that with what Fukushima is doing to the ocean, we're going to find giant squid. We're going to find giant shrimp. We're going to find giant amoeba. We're going to have little tiny tropical fish the size of my video camera. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless. Please donate to the show if you can, because every penny you give me goes to a better show. I recently contacted the sheriff of Canton, Ohio, and asked to interview him, or at least get his opinion, 
on sheriffs who are refusing to uh, enforce unconstitutional gun laws. And I'm interested to see what his reply is. So I'm working on things like that. Um, I'm trying to save money so I can get a computer that is better than this one so that I can edit them better and get all my graphics up and my music back. Yeah. You're listening to The Correct Views. Thanks for doing so. Good night. God bless.